Hello, everyone, and welcome to this month's Connect with Control M. Today, we'll be discussing Application Integrator. My name is Joel Brecker, and I am a technical support analyst at BMC Software. I support Control M products for distributed systems in the Americas. Do you have applications in your environment that would benefit from automation? Well, today we're going to show you how to integrate various application types using Application Integrator. So let's take a look here at the agenda before we go too far. So today we're going to discuss the different application type interfaces that you can integrate using Application Integrator. We'll look at some of the benefits of using Application Integrator in your environment. We'll check out the requirements. We'll also do a demonstration. In the demonstration, we're going to create a, a command line utility that's used in Control-M. We're going to create a, a job type for that, uh, and it's going to be using the DBU hot backup. Also, we're going to discuss some troubleshooting tips and tricks, and then we'll follow that up with a Q&A. Before we go any further, I would like to introduce today's panelists. Today we have with us Ted and Martin from support, and Avner from development. Also, I'd like to take this opportunity to remind everyone that if they have any questions, please enter them into the Q&A panel. Um, and uh, if you make sure you put them to all panelists, we're going to aim to cover these at the end of the session. And also, if you want to save this presentation, you can go to File and Save in your WebEx uh, console there. All right. so. Let's take a look at the different types of interfaces that you can interface with using Application Integrator. So if your application uses REST API or command line or web services, you can use uh, Application Integrator to integrate that application. Um, this makes it very easy to automate any application in your vir environment, uh, even a custom application that you created um, there in-house. And so, what are the benefits of using Application Integrator? Well, Application Integrator allows you to automate applications that don't have a control module available from Control-M at the moment. So you can take, as long as it uses one of those interface types that we showed on a previous slide, you can integrate your application. Also, it's your job type. You have custom, you've made this custom job type, so it's yours. You can control when it gets updated, when you have to change a field on the form. Maybe the application you're integrating with, you added a new feature, or the, the vendor added a new feature. Uh, since you're in control of this, this job type, you are the one who can uh, make these changes. It's your own design, so it makes it, uh, makes it very... Uh, uh, beneficial for you. So what are the requirements for installing Application Integrator in your environment? Well, the first thing that we need to make sure of is we install the latest fix packs for Application Integrator. Um, right now, it's a uh, fix pack 2 for Application Integrator, so you'd want to make sure that you're on that fix pack if you were doing it today. But make sure you're on the latest. That's the important thing. The next thing is your browser. You want to make sure that your browser meets the minimum requirements. Uh, if you're going to use Chrome browser, you'd want to use Chrome 20 or later. Firefox is 25 or later. And Internet Explorer, you need to use version 10 or later. Now, the thing with Internet Explorer is you need to be aware of uh, turning off compatibility mode. The next thing is, uh, when you, for Control-M, the version, the base version, needs to be at minimum version 8 and you do need to have the latest fix packs installed. It's very important. So let's, uh, let's go now to an overview of what we're going to do in our demo. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a tour of the designer, the AI designer, as we'll call it. Uh, we're going to also check out some steps that have already been created, and we'll even create a step and show you uh, how easy it is to uh, create um, your own job type. We're going to also deploy this job type, and then we'll go to the GUI, and we'll just look at the job form. We'll make sure that uh, everything we've created is uh, the way that we wanted it to be. So let's go ahead, and we're going to move now into the demo. What we're going to do is we're going to create a job type, 
that's going to use the command line interface called um, uh, called DBU Hot Backup. And so here we go. All right, so we've got my screen here. And uh, as you can see, we have here, let me just adjust this a little bit so it's not cut off. All right, so we have our CCM open here. And to access the designer, what we're going to do, because this is a web, uh, a web, uh, web server uh, web page, the designer is. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually click here on our web server URLs. And you can see here at the top, we've got our application integrator link. So we're going to click here. And it's going to pull up our browser of choice. And this, we're going to use Chrome. And uh, you can see here we have a login. So let's go ahead and log in to the application integrator designer. All right. And so first thing we want to take notice of is we have a ribbon across the top here. And we have three buttons. The first button is create job type. And this basically creates a new job type. Um, starts off with a little wizard, uh, lets you choose a name, and uh, you know even an icon for your job type. Uh, the next one is import job type from file. Now this is a handy button because if you've exported a job type from another environment, or even if you've downloaded a job type from the application hub on communities, you can use this button to import that job type into your designer. And then from there, you can deploy it, uh, make changes uh, to your job type. The next button is the import job type from application hub. Now, the important thing to know about this button is that if your enterprise manager server has access to the internet like mine does, so when you click on the button, it will take you to a listing of all of the integrations that are on the application hub at this time. And you, from here, you can look at more information. You can download and install it or, uh, you know, however you want to handle these. Um, but if you don't have Internet access from your Enterprise Manager server, which many of you probably don't, uh, what you'll need to do is from your, your own laptop, you'll go and download or computer, however you've got access to the Internet, download from the hub the job type and use the import job type from file. So let's go into the actual job type that we're working with. And uh, let's take a quick tour of this. We have another ribbon. This time we've got a details button. And this button here will allow you to make changes to the name or plugin ID uh, of your job type. Um, and also some other little details. You can even change the icon if you're not happy with your icon. You can change the type of job interface that you're creating. If you decided that, you know, well, I thought it was going to be command line. Well, now it's web service. You can change it there. And then you just simply click update, and it makes the uh, changes to your job type. The next thing is the save button. When you click save, it saves a copy of this to the Enterprise Manager server. Um, so that you can uh, work on it more later. You can also duplicate it if you need to make like an alternate version of this job type. Maybe you need to have uh, a version with um, another field. You can make a duplicate, make your changes, and then uh, save it. You can also do deploy here. This sends it out to your agent and then also uh, makes it available for your clients. So when uh, someone logs in to the Enterprise Manager GUI, they can use this job type. Also, this is a validation button. This is a very basic validation. It just checks to make sure that all of your parameters that you have defined are uh, actually being used in your forms. It's not going to test if your job's going to run right or anything. It's just a very basic validation. The next button is an export. So if you need to export this from dev, take it over to um, your prod or another environment, you could do this export here, and then you could just move that file and import it into the other environment. So let's go down into the job here. We have uh, pre-execution. Now pre-execution and post-execution, I just want to touch on these right quick. Uh, the pre-execution and post-execution are the two steps that you can only have one of. The actual execution steps in between, you can have uh, as many, you can have many of these. So, um, so let's look at this pre-execution step. We have a command 
line type step. And as you can see here, I'm checking for a directory. If it doesn't exist, I'm creating it. Um, also, I have some return code handling, and if you click here, you can see that uh, if this step returns anything other than zero, we're going to fail the job. Let's move down into the execution here. You can see here that we have another step. This step is called move files, and it's a command line step. And in this step, we're going to move files, and you can see there's two parameters here. These two parameters are job form parameters, so let's uh, take a look at that. You can see there's backup directory and backup archive directory. You can see there's return code handling, so same thing. If it returns anything other than zero, it's going to be uh, uh, failing the job. No output handling, so let's move to the next execution step. And this one is going to be to remove all files from uh, the directory before we run our backup. So you see we have another parameter here using backup directory. We have return code handling. So you can see here, same thing. If it returns anything other than zero, it's going to fail. So now we need to actually make the step that's going to run the DBU hot backup. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to click this gear. We're going to choose add execution step. And we want a command line. But let's uh, let's give this a cool name. Let's say uh, uh, hot backup. All right. And if we wanted to, we can do a description, but we'll leave that for now. Um, all right. So we're going to paste in here. We've already got the command all set up and ready to go. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to copy and paste it in, and then we'll uh, assign our parameters to the uh, to the command. So let's paste. All right, so we've got backup directory. This is a uh, parameter that we've already predefined, so let's go ahead and choose that. We want backup directory. And then administrator password. Now this is a uh, security uh, thing here, so we want to put it into the connection profile. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the plus. We're going to choose create parameter, and we're going to choose connection profile. And then from here, we're going to give it a name. We'll just call this DBA PWD. Um, and then we'll just uh, say admin DB password. Okay, and that's what the label is going to be called. And now we need to choose the type of control. This is going to be a password box. And let's come down, and all values are going to be valid. And we'll say mandatory field because we don't want them to skip a password. So let's click Add. And now, as you can see, it's added our parameter here where we had our cursor, but it's also added it to our connection profile. So let's keep going here. Now we have to add a parameter for um, remove unnecessary logs. So let's go ahead and click on... Here, create parameter, and this is going to be a job form parameter, so let's click that. And we'll name this one remove logs. And we can just add a space in here just to make it look a little nicer on the label. And this time we're going to choose a drop down list control. And for the user, he'll see yes, but it's going to pass a Y to the utility because that's what it looks for. And we'll say no here, and we'll pass an N. Okay, so let's add that one. And as you can see, it's added our parameter, and then it's added our drop-down uh, control here, our list, drop-down list control. So let's do some return code handling. What we need to do is we need to, if, any, if it returns anything other than zero, we want it to fail. Most likely this uh, utility is going to succeed, but maybe the backup fails. Well, if this, if this utility succeeds, but the backup fails and we have no, no output handling here, then this job is going to complete successfully. So what we want to do is we want to put some output handling here, and we're going to check for backup taken. We know that when the backup is successful, it's going to say backup taken. So we'll paste that there. And then we're going to choose does not contain. So if we do not see backup taken, we want to fail the job. So 
So let's hit OK there. And now we can move down to the post execution. Let's check that out. So we have a command line here, and this is just like a final validation check to make sure that the backup did indeed succeed. We have a uh, simple check just to see how many files are listed in the directory. We have some output handling here, and this output handling uh, just basically checks for you know total and zero. So if the total is zero, we're going to fail the job because even though the backup utility may have succeeded, maybe it, said it took the backup, but the files aren't there, so we want to fail. So now we can save our job type, so we'll click Save. And let's validate, make sure we're using all of our parameters correctly. All right, so we've got that. So now we can deploy our job type. Now when we deploy our job type, it's going to go to uh, three places. It's going to go, first it's going to create a deployed folder here on the Enterprise Manager server. And then, well I say here, it's going to be on the Enterprise Manager server. And then it's going to create an XML file on the agent, and then it will add some uh, other files uh, to the client when you connect. There's a uh, KA that actually details all of the places that you're going to be able to find those uh, files because it'll be necessary as a workaround if you run into an issue where you can't deploy. And we'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. Um, so let me log in here. And while I'm logging in there, let's check the uh, CCM. And as you can see, the, the job type has not shown up yet here which that's not a problem. What we can do to accelerate it showing up is we can come here to the command line on the control M server and we can do a CTM get CM and then we can type in the name of the, the machine that we're, the agent that we're dealing with here and we'll just do a get. And as you can see there, it's, it's there. So let's come back here and check. And if we do a simple refresh, we should see it show up relatively quick now. So we know it's there. Um, we do need it to show up because what we're going to do is we're going to check out the connection profile. Let's go ahead and refresh one more time here and uh, see. Okay. So when we when we actually use the job type. And here we'll start setting up the workspace here while we wait on this to show up. Uh, let's refresh it one more time. There we go. All right, so um, we'll right click here. We're going to choose connection profile because we do need to, uh, here, let me minimize some of this we don't need. Um, so let's go to right click here. We're going to create connection profile. As you can see, um, this is just like any other connection profile management, um, like for CM for DB or AFT. And so we're going to create a connection profile. And let's go to the next one. We need a run as user because this is a uh, command line job type. So let's do this. We need a password because we've uh, defined that. And we can do that. Now the connection profiles are a security uh, thing. If you don't add anything to a connection profile, if you even remove the run as user uh, field from it, then you won't need a connection profile at all. It'll You can just go along without one. But if you do need one and you need values there, then uh, you, you have to come here and fill it out. Uh, and let's see, all right, so here's our job type in the GUI. And let's drag and drop it down in. And OK, so here we go. Now we have our job type. We have all of our fields that we've defined. Let's go ahead and click on the connection profile. We'll choose the one that we created here. And we click OK. And so now we could, we could fill out the rest of this, and we could run this job. We could do tests. Uh, but that's, that's how simple it is to create this integration. So let's go back to the presentation now. We're going to look at the locations um, where the items get distributed from 
when you click on the deploy job. So the first thing is when you click save, it creates a saved copy on the YAM server in this uh, in an apps repo folder. Not this apps repo folder here is for the deployment. Um, there's a uh, another folder that's a job your job name dot deployed that actually gets placed on the server as well, and it holds a zip folder that you would use to deploy to the client if you had to do it manually. Uh, when you click that deploy, it takes and copies that zip folder over to your client, and then it deploys all the pieces that are necessary to run application integrator on your client, the forms and the plugins and such. Um, and that's, that's going to be placed here, uh, one of the places that it will be placed. Um, the agent, it gets an XML file, and it goes in the apps repo folder and, and under a job name folder. So if you have to manually deploy, there's a KA, and we'll go into that now. There's, we have our troubleshooting tips here. There's three important KAs that we have here. Um, the first one is if you're presented with a blank page when you're getting ready to log into the application integrator designer, um, it's most likely going to be that you're not on the latest fix pack. So that's the first thing to check. The second thing to check would be to make sure that you're using in the correct browser. And then if you're using Internet Explorer, just make sure that you have uh, compatibility mode turned off. The next KA we want to talk about is if your application integrator designer login fails. You're presented with the login, you try to log in, and it fails. Same thing, you could be on not the latest fix pack. Um, so make sure that you have the latest fix pack installed. And if you're unable to install the latest fix pack, maybe you've got a change process or something, there's a workaround to this. You can use what's called the AI.CFG file. And this KA describes how to use that, how to set it up to point it to the correct GUI and the correct CMS. The next one is the one that we talked a little bit about during the demo, is the my job type won't deploy. So this, in this case, the workaround would be to manually deploy, and this KA describes all the places to deploy the job type to and how to go, th go about that process. Thank you, everyone, for uh, taking time out of your busy day to uh, come and check out this webinar today. Uh, we hope that this information that we provided was useful. And uh, after you close this webinar, you'll be receiving a survey. And we use this survey so that uh, we can find out where we need to improve and also any future pro uh, topics that you want to see. So we encourage you to fill that out. And then also, it, you can find us on social media on Facebook and Twitter. And you'll also be able to find our past webinars if you go to the BMC communities or YouTube or iTunes. And even today's webinar is going to be posted there in a couple of days. Um, our next webinar topic is going to be Control M Agent 9, Root, Non-Root, and Sudo. We also suggest that you visit our BMC communities website this will allow you to get connected with other users. Um, you can view webinars, post questions, you can even search for answers. BMC Communities is on the bmc.com homepage, or you can access it from communities.bmc.com.